Hi, and welcome back to Primo University. I'm Daryl Schultz. In this class, we're going to look at uh, how to light the grill, how to bring it up to temperature, and how to control that temperature. So in the next few minutes, uh, it's a very simple process. What I've gone ahead and done already is I have loaded half the firebox with charcoal. There is one basic rule about natural lump charcoal uh, that I always like to tell new users. You, could, you can never have too much charcoal, but you can have too little, and that's usually a common mistake. People tend not, you know, maybe a softball size, and they think that that will heat up the grill. But the great thing about natural lump charcoal is that after you've extinguished it, after you've cooked, you can come back, stir it up, and you're able to relight it two to three more times. So it's a very, very efficient uh, fuel source. But what we're going to use today, there, there are many ways to, to light the grill. Um, you can go on forums, you can look online and see all the different methods. But really what I'm going to talk about today is Primo's Quick Lights. It's a paraffin, wood-based, um, and it works just like a match. Um, we've got a striker box on the side. And so what I'm going to do is just strike this, light it. I'm going to nestle it into the charcoal. And then we're going to wait about uh, five to seven minutes, let that charcoal really heat up. We're going to close the dome, and then we're going to learn about how to control the temperature. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So what you want to do is you don't want to put it in right away. You kind of want to hold it down. Just let it start to burn a little bit. Let's make sure that that all gets lit. And then we're able to just nestle that right in, in there. And we're just going to let that go for the next five to seven minutes. And we'll be ready to cook in about 15 minutes. Okay, so now we've got the charcoal lit with the quick lights. I'm going to go ahead and add the cooking grates back onto the grill. And then to let that come up to temperature, I'm going to go ahead and close the dome. I'm going to raise the top vent all the way fully open and we're going to watch this temperature slowly rise. When we get close to about 25 degrees from our target temperature, we're going to start to move down and start, uh, start closing down the air. Now one thing to keep in mind too is that if you're doing low temperature cooking, you, know, you really only need to add one quick light. You really want to light it in one area. Uh, but if you're doing grilling temperatures, you can add two, three to really get that charcoal going and get a good bed of coals. And just a quick note, you know, we, we talk about the different ways that you can light it, but one thing that you can't do is you can never use lighter fluid or any combustible fluids in it. What happens is when you use a chemical like that, it ends up uh, being absorbed by the interior of the ceramics and it really imparts a, a really kind of a, a chemical distasteful taste to the food. So just avoid using any of that. You can use quick lights, you can use a number of different ways to light it that are natural. And, uh, and so what we're going to do right now is we're going to let it get up. As we said, just close to our target temperature, we'll start closing it down and uh, I'll see you in just a few minutes. So we've had the grill closed for about five to seven minutes. The top vent's been fully open. Uh, as you can see, we're up to and climbing up to about 280 degrees. We're gonna try and get to about 325 degrees. And what I wanna show you is a little bit how to control the temperature. Now, for the purposes of this cook right now, we're gonna be doing grilling. Uh, once we're done with that, I wanna to talk to you and give you some tips on low temperature cooking as well. So what we're gonna do is, as we're coming up, we're just about, about to 290, 300. What you wanna do is, the increments, you always want to keep in mind the general rule is the more air that you add, the higher the temperature. Less air means lower temperature. Um, but one of the key tips is that you have to remember is that it is very easy to increase the temperature of the grill, uh, but it's very difficult to get it low. So when we're doing low temperature cooking, like smoking or roasting, you really want to be careful and let that temperature come up very, very slowly and just kind of hit your target temperature sort of at a walk instead of a run. But for grilling, we're running all the way on this one. So we're up to 300, we're almost up to 325. Now, the settings will be different for each, each model of, of the grill, but these are some good general settings. When I'm grilling, I wanna put that and just have it open about 3 eighths of an inch. I've got the daisy wheels all the way open. I've got my draft door all the way open. And you wanna keep in mind too that you're really controlling the temperature with the top vent, even when you're doing low temperature cooking. Um, even for grilling, if you want to do some roasting where you're cooking and you want to get that consistent for hours and hours at, at 325 or lower, you can actually take the draft door and close it about halfway. A Primo grill is very efficient with the amount of air that it uses and that means that you're not using as much fuel either. So we're at the target temp, we're just about up to 350 now. What I would do, 
is just close it a little bit more, maybe close the daisy wheel just a little bit, and now you can see that starting to stabilize. Now, as you're cooking, as you're opening the grill, you're, you're actually gonna lose some temperature, but Primo grills come back very quickly. They seem to recover much better than other grills when it comes to, to getting back to that target temperature. So you can see that we've leveled out. We've dialed in at, at 350 right now. So we're ready to cook. We can put food on it. And one of the things that I, I wanna talk to you too about the low temperature cooking now, we only added one quick light to this particular cook that we're doing right now, this demonstration. That's how I would do low temperature cooking because you wanna take almost 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes if you really wanna to get to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 225. My setup for doing that would be close the whole top vent, maybe have the daisy wheels open about half. And you wanna think about just the width of your finger, put it in here, move it all the way over and that's, that's really a good general setting for doing a low temperature cooking. So when you're doing a brisket, you're doing a pulled pork, a Boston butt, doing ribs, you can always keep that, that rule in mind. And in fact, Primo's actually efficient enough that I actually run mine just a little bit lower than that. And I seem to get a really good consistent temperature. And you can see now, even though I've closed the air, we're starting to lose a little bit of our temperature on that. That's really the basics of controlling the temperature. There is a small learning curve once you get your Primo grill and you get it set up, um, you know, your first cook, you really should do hamburgers, steaks, hot dogs, things like that, just so you kind of get used to controlling that temperature. Um, but after a few cooks, uh, you're, you're gonna be dialed in and I think that you're really gonna love uh, just all the cooking flexibility that you can do. So thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.